Hello and welcome to day 4 of the 30 day chart slash upload challenge. In the last video I showed how the geom bar function acts as a counter for categorical variables that are plotted on the x-axis with ggplot with their count on the y-axis. If you use the count function you can plot the newly created n value directly on the y-axis after specifying it in the aesthetics mapping argument but then for geom bar you have to use stat equals identity and you can also simply use geom call that works like geom bar with stat equals identity to accomplish the same thing. The examples as always come from the R graph gallery website where yesterday I showed basic bar plots and today we, we're going to explore group and stack bar plots as well as circular bar plots. For the grouped and stacked bar plots we're going to start with basic group bar plots then stack them and show how you can do that percentage wise and then follow up with customizations and some more groupings. For the circular bar plots we show how to make a basic one, add labels, add gaps, even adding gaps between groups and order the values from smallest to highest and then show some more customizations. If you like these tutorials subscribe to the channel or leave a like. Let's get started with the code. We will start with group bar charts and first create a test data set where we have four different species each repeating three times and then three different conditions that are repeated four times. Then we create 12 observations from a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of 50 and transform them into positive values with the absolute function. If you want to get the same values as i, you can set the seed to 430 as well. As you can see the repeat function, if you use each as an argument, your vector that you specify with the names, each entry gets repeated first before the next one appears. If you use times, then it will repeat the whole vector. So now I want to plot the species and the associated value, but also keep the condition information. I will put the species on the x-axis and the y u on the well, but also include now a fill argument with a condition. Now in geom bar we have to use stat equals identity, but also use the position argument, which for group bar charts would be dodge. Now we have all the species on the x-axis with their values, but also the condition as a fill dodge next to each other, creating these group bar charts for each species. And the same would work with the geom call function where you only specify position equals dodge and don't need the stat equals identity function argument. If you change the position argument from dodge to stack, you would get stack bar charts. And if you want to create a bar chart that disregards the sample size for each species but shows their proportions on a percentage scale, you would change the position argument from stack to fill. An easy way to improve upon this chart is to use the scales package where you can add a specific argument to the y-axis where labels equals percent lead to a change of 0.5 to 50 percent format. Let's continue with some customizations where we make use of two packages, the Viridis package for some better colors and the HRBR themes package for some good themes. These functions we already used to create this plot. We can use the scale fill Viridis function to apply the colors from this package and also use ggtitle to add a title. With the xlab function and empty air quotes we can get rid of the species lab labeling here and with the theme ipsum we create a nice looking theme like this. Next we are going to include even more information with the facet wrap function. In this stack bar chart we have for each species the three different conditions stacked upon each other. If you want to separate the species out what you can do is use the facet wrap function with the species column argument. Now we can get rid of species for the x-axis and use condition. Also use condition to fill the colors and thanks to facet wrap each species now gets its own little graph and with dodge instead of stack you get the different conditions grouped next to each other. The the Viridis package comes with different coloring options that you can specify here as well and this is how they look. Option A, B, C, D and E, the one that we are used. Let us now create a circular bar plot of this data set where you have a running ID from 1 to 60 that you could also write like this. And then an individual label that's just person with the sequence 1 to 60 added to it thanks to the paste zero function and then a value that's sampled from 10 to 160 times with the replacement so some values could repeat 
in this data set. And if you want to get the same numbers, because in the sampling this is randomized, you could also set the seed 430. So this is the data we are going to plot. This is the start of the plotting. We put the ID on the X axis, 1 to 60, and the value on the Y axis. Use that identity and then it's important to use Y limb with a negative 100 and a plus 120, because for circling we want to have a hole in the middle. If we now follow up with the chord polar function, you turn this into a circular bar plot. Now if we want to get rid of all these unnecessary lines and labelings and the backgrounds, we can specify the minimal and then also use element blank for the axis, the title, the panel grip and even specify the plot margins. So this is the basic bar plot. Now we're going to add labels, change some spacings. If you don't specify the ID as a factor for the x variable, you won't get a separation between the first and the 60th value. This is how it looks with the factoring for ID and this if it's kept as a numeric value from 1 to 60. Adding a label to the bars is a little bit tricky. We create a label data set that's first a clone of the original data and then calculate the angle of the label for each bar. The end row of the label data set tells us that we have 60 bars and then you can use this formula to calculate for each position in which angle the label should be placed. Almost 90 degrees for the first and then as you continue down the clock here you get to almost 1 degrees. This would be minus 90. We can also add some horizontal adjustment and an if else function. If the angle is below minus 90, then you use 1, otherwise use 0, which will lead to every label that's on the right side of the circle not being shifted horizontally, but every label on the left side is gonna be moved further to the left. And then we also flip certain angles to make them readable when they come around to the part where they would be upside down. What I changed to the previous plot is the color and the alpha and also a bit of the margin plotting and now we add labels. To add the labels we have to use the geom text function where we specify the data set and then also specify the position of the label which will be at the same x values as before for the id and for the y value we add 10 to separate it a bit from the bar chart. We also tell that the label is going to be the individual name, give it some horizontal adjustment, specify the color and the font face, the size and very importantly the angle which would lead then to this bar chart labeled with the individual value and you can see it see here that after the 30th value the labeling position is flipped from the angle. If we want to add a gap between any value we specify how big the empty portion should be and then create a matrix with an ace that looks like this and then we can use a row bind to add this to the original data adding this big block at the end that just holds an A values. And the rest remains the same and now you can see here would be 10 bars without the label or value that just gets stuck in between the first and the last real individual. Now imagine the 60 individuals belong to certain groups and you want to show them in a different color. You can add that to the data set with repeating factors from A to D. And now instead of 10 empty bars at the end, we want to have a gap of four bars in between each group. Now the dummy matrix to add is a little bit more complicated. Before it was simply a matrix with an A's with 10 rows, empty bar number, and the number of columns of the original data set for columns. Now the number of of rows is four times the number of levels we have which is four group a to d so we want to have 16 empty bars in total the matrix is now looking like this but it also needs some group information that we will add depending on each level repeating each time as the number of empty bars. So now we have a dummy matrix going from A to D with empty bars four times each. Now before we bind them and add the running ID we have to insert one arrangement step where we sort the data by group. So now after binding the original data and the dummy matrix the arrangement by group will lead to all the values from group A repeating until it would continue with B but now it inserted this group these four empty bars for group A dummy values and this continues before it jumps to group C and D. And as you can see before the ID value sometimes had an ace but now with the last command where we overwrite the ID with a sequence going from 1 all the way to the end of the data we have these running IDs from 1 to 76. All the commands for plotting and the functions are the same and we get the following result. Now group A, B and Z and D separated by empty bar gaps. But because I wanted to put them into different colors based on group we can use the fill within ggplot specify group but this also means that for the filling we cannot specify the color 
anymore. So yeah, when you specify the filling with group, then in GeoMbar all you have to do is specify the alpha for saturation. Otherwise the colors get really intense. And if you delete the legend position equals none within theme, you would have the labels of the group included into the graph. If you want to order the individuals within each group from smallest to highest to highest to smallest, it's a little bit tricky because these individuals will be transformed into factors alphabetically and then numerically without considering the value anymore. So even if we sort by value and then by group and have them all going from smallest to biggest, individual 8, 1, 10, etc. If you would plot this, it would look exactly the same again. But here's what you can do to solve this. So if you use the range function on group and value, then data would look like this, sorted by group and value with the individuals. But the individuals itself is still a character value that would be reordered in the ggplot function. So what you have to do is the following. You have to follow up the range with a mutate where you create a factor based on the individual order that it is currently is and the new levels will be based on the individuals. So now it will know that person 8 has to come first and then person 5. So now the plotting commands are again the same and the new order is like this. Last but not least I want to show that there are even more customizations you can do with a baseline for each group and then some grids in between each value at certain limits. To accomplish that you need an extra base data set that keeps track of the group starting and end positions and then a grid data set. The grid data will be plotted first and then overlain by the bar plots so it will fill in the gaps of the empty bars. You add the grid lines with the geom segment function you specify the color in gray and then use annotate to put in the numbers from 20 to 80. And the rest is the same except at the end you add the geom segment based on the base data to add a black color to each group line that you then only see if you zoom in or export it to the clipboard. This concludes the tutorial on advanced bar charts where you learned how to group them, stack them, put them into individual graphs with facet wrap and use chord polar to make circular bar charts. I hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. Until next time here at the Data Digest.